What up, Fortnite fam? I'm Matt, and this is the entire Fortnite storyline in under 10 minutes. It all began long ago, way before the creation of the island, way before the creation of the Omniverse. There was a point, a zero point, and it created everything. Every dimension, every multiverse, universe, and, well, reality, all stemmed from that. Eventually, a group of intrepid scientists discovered the truth of the Zero Point and all of the realities that were intermingled within it, and that imagined order wanted to put it to use for their own nefarious purpose. So began Fortnite Battle Royale, a simple island with an encroaching storm stuck in a temporal loop. A hundred loopers enter, and at the end, only one walks out the victor. The IO continued their experiment in peace for a time, until eventually a comet began to draw closer and closer to the island in Reality Zero. The comet struck the island, causing mass destruction and the delivery of a new being to the island outside of the IO's design, the Visitor. At the time, a movie was being made by the IO on the island for reasons unknown, and part of that movie included a gigantic prop rocket. The visitor used the hot rocks that he found in the comet to transform that rocket into something functional, and used it to rip open a rift in the fabric of Reality Zero. This event began to drag alternate realities from across the Omniverse, depositing them on the island of Reality Zero. The heightened level of interdimensional energy allowed something dark to come through. The cube. The cube rotated around the island until eventually, after depositing seven runes on the ground, it arrived at Loot Lake and sank down under the waves. After becoming one with Loot Lake, the cube reconstituted itself at the base of the Loot Lake island and ripped itself up into the sky. The cube and the island then floated across the rest of the Fortnite map. It stopped atop the seven different runes as it travelled, charging itself up and obtaining new power from each of them before once again returning to the lake. With its energy at maximum and back up of the lake, the cube destroyed the floating island and then exploded itself. The resultant energy ripped the universe asunder even further and sucked the loopers on the island at the time into a kind of in-between dimension a place between universes, before returning them to where they had previously been. All of this happening was like a beacon to the wider omniverse, and before long, beings of extreme power had begun to take notice and arrived at the island. The first of these beings was the Ice King, with his prisoner trapped inside the iceberg. After a time, the Ice King managed to scavenge a shard of the cube and use it to power himself up an obscene degree. He was able to create a blizzard avatar of himself, and also swamp the island in snow. What the Ice King didn't know is that the prisoner had already escaped, and his old enemy was growing in power. That power manifested in a massive transformation for Wailing Woods, becoming a jungle-styled area with a giant volcano in the middle. While the war between fire and ice heated up, a group were active on the island, uncovering a secret vault underneath its dirt and rock. After excavating that vault and securing five runes to unlock it, the true power of Reality Zero was laid bare for the very first time. The Zero Point. Unleashing the power of the Zero Point had an unfortunate effect, the destruction of major parts of the island thanks to the volcano blowing its top. Time passed and the destroyed areas were rebuilt into futuristic approximations of what had been before, all powered by the energy being given off by the Zero Point in the depths of the vault. But another threat was looming. Eggs that used to be in the Ice King's lair had hatched, and out of that grew a massive monster known as the Devourer. It launched itself into the water and began to attack various locations on the Fortnite island, eventually dealing damage to the cables that supplied power to Neo Tilted. It was clear that something needed to be done about this beast, so a giant mecha suit was constructed to destroy the monster. However, during the fight, the suit needed to resort to desperate measures and use the Zero Point itself to power up. While the Devourer was dealt with, the Zero Point was now exposed, and that came with its own set of problems. The Zero Point's energy quickly ran rampant, and time began to fracture in Reality Zero. Using the instability in time and space, the Visitor made another visit, and began to place rift beacons around the island to break down the bounds of reality even further. In the end, the Visitor, along with six others, began their assault on the island, attempting to break the loop and leave the Zero Point undamaged, fixing reality. It worked! Sort of. Kind of. Not really. Reality was rebooted, but all the Seven managed to do was put things back in their place, with the IO in charge of their experiment. It all began long ago, way before the creation of the Second Island, way before the reboot of the Omniverse. There was a point, a zero point, and it created everything. Every dimension, every multiverse, universe, and, well, reality, all stemmed from that and a second island was born. Completely different from the original, and on it, two factions. Ego and Alter were at war with one another. This war went on and on until the two groups revealed their true names, Ghost and Shadow. 
These two spy organizations claim various points of territory across the Fortnite island, the most important of which was the Agency. The Agency was where Midas, the leader of Ghosts, built his doomsday machine. Somehow Midas knew about the loop, about time resetting itself over and over again, and he believed that his doomsday machine was the key to ending it all. He and his daughter, Jules the Engineer, used the doomsday machine to push back against the storm, revealing the truth of the IO to the loopers for the very first time. But the storm and the time loop that it caused were more powerful than Midas possibly could have imagined. It changed form and flooded the island, destroying much of the island and most importantly the Doomsday Machine. With Midas out of the picture, seemingly eaten by a shark, Jules took over the Shadow Group and reformed it into the Authority. The ghosts weren't going down without a fight, building their own fortilla to rebel against the authoritarian rule of Shadow. Over time, the flood receded from the island, revealing a new area known as Coral Castle. The receding water levels also revealed that people were still arriving on the island in search of the Zero Point and its energies, as the astronaut Dio had crashed his ship into the water. He repaired his ship and flew off back into space, which caused the return of the Rifts. All the while, Shadow and Ghost continued to wage their war. Meanwhile, on the other side of reality, an Asgardian god known as Thor allied himself with Galactus, the devourer of worlds, in an attempt to beat back a reality-destroying force in their home universe. As they travelled throughout their realm, they came across a rift, leading them straight to Reality Zero. Galactus couldn't resist the power of the Zero Point, and so set forth through the rift to consume it. Thor, bolstered by the power cosmic, shot forth ahead of Galactus to try and stop this from happening. Unfortunately, not even a god can resist the power of the loop, and after he summoned a bunch of heroes from his own universe, they all lost their memories. Universes collide. Reality Zero and the universe of Earth-616 had begun to cross over, but the heroes of that world had forgotten who they were and needed to reawaken themselves to stop the oncoming threat of Galactus. Tony Stark, better known in his home universe as Iron Man, hatched a scheme to bring his lab over to Reality Zero so he could work on a plan to take Galactus down for good and repel him back to Earth-616 universe. Their plan, throwing an insane amount of gamma bombs down Galactus' throat, worked. But not before Galactus managed to absorb some of the powers of the Zero Point, leaving it vulnerable once again, with the walls of reality once again quivering and faltering. To enter Agent Jones, a member of the Imagined Order who had been given orders to save reality by sealing the bridge, stabilizing the Zero Point, and most importantly, not allowing anyone to escape the loop. Jones set off on a journey across time, space, and universes to track down a group of bounty hunters that he believed could create enough chaos and noise that no one would even think about escaping the loop. Unfortunately, all this universe hopping only served to drain the Zero Point even further, destabilizing it even more. Jones knew that he had to do something, and so called in someone that the IO really didn't want to have to deal with, the Foundation, leader of the Seven. With chaos unfolding, Jones and the Foundation managed to seal the Zero Point up with the help of a looper, the act of which caused a string of reality waves to mess with the very fabric of Reality Zero. The pair eventually managed to seal the Zero Point, even after it began to bloom into a new omniverse, but this trapped everyone in the loop right back at square one. As a result of the reality waves, wide parts of the island had reverted to a primal form, with the sealed zero point at the top of a mysterious spire protected by guardians from another reality. As a result of the universal chaos, a new force arrived on the island, a force from beyond the stars themselves. Aliens invaded the island and ripped the zero point straight out of its spire, taking it up onto the mothership and blasting the foundation straight onto another Earth. The IO weren't about to take that sitting down and rose up, enlisting the help of the loopers to try and fight the aliens back. They were successful to a point, destroying the ship, but revealing that these alien beings were in fact the controllers of the cubes. An army of cubes were unleashed upon the island, and the true figurehead of them all was the Cube Queen. Destruction was wrought across the island, and the Cube Queen was enacting a plan, converting the center of the island into a cube-corrupted landscape known as the Convergence. The Cube Queen launched an all-out devastating attack on the island, ripping apart various locations and leaving the loopers utterly defenseless as a gigantic rift was torn open above, with even more motherships looming from the last reality. All while this was happening, the leader of the IO, Sloan, and her hunchman Gunner were interrogating Jones on his involvement with the Seven, until the Foundation, fresh from escaping Gotham City, arrived to save the man. The pair rush off and begin to flip the island itself with the gyro system, destroying the alien ships and forcing the Cube Queen to teleport back to her home dimension. The loopers floated back to the surface, revealing the flip side. On the flip side, the IO quickly begin digging up the surface with their mole teams, which eventually lead to the Imagined Order unleashing a devastating attack on the island in Chapter 3 Season 2, which is where we are right now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire Fortnite storyline in under 10 minutes. Did you enjoy the video? Make sure you like and subscribe with the bell button turned on. The storyline is, as ever, continuing to unfold, and we'll always be here to break it down. Whew. Got that done in under 10 minutes, baby. I need a throat lozenge.